Hi, everybody. It is now September 13 already? Friday the 13th. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's going to happen? Well, every day is Friday the 13th in the good old U.S. of A. I want to start this video with Greg Manorino, a video that he posted yesterday. Uh, we're in big trouble. Big, 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 big trouble. And I listen... Oh, I made the mistake of listening to some of that Democratic debate. Why do I do this to myself? Oh, my God. It was painful. I kept trying to listen, but then I just had to, you know, say goodbye. Look, uh, anybody who is still caught in this matrix, whether you're on the red team or the blue team, then that... It simply just makes you comfortable. I, I don't know what to say, um, but the corruption, the greed, the every system has failed already. Um, it, it's, it's remarkable. Um, it doesn't matter if we have the red team that is more powerful over the blue team or the blue team is more powerful over the red team. We're still heading in the same direction which is heading towards our demise. Now, a lot of people think shit hits the fan. Oh my God. Well, guess what? Shit is hitting the fan every single day all over and a whole lot of people are being destroyed. So if you haven't been yet, you're lucky, but it's coming. All right, Trump, Trump and this economy, oh, Oh, trying to get through to a Trump supporter. Uh, he's just like that last guy who was just like the guy before him. And boy, more and more Americans have been pushed over, over the cliff already during the years of Trump. And more are going to be pushed over. Will you be one of those? Perhaps. Yes, but history was made today. History was made today, and I would be willing to bet that most of you, most of you missed it. Um, what am I talking about? Well, for the first time in history, a sitting U.S. president has called for zero to negative rates. Now, I have a little diagram for you. Never in the annals, or is that annals, of history has a sitting president advocated for negative rates. Now, is that because Donald Trump is just so damn smart that he's finally the first guy to say, hey, let's go negative, like Christine Lagarde, you know, the felon from the IMF who could not get a job in 7-Eleven, you know, she's like, yeah, Negative rates are great for the global economy. See, what they're trying to tell you is negative rates will force you, if you're a member of the middle class, to continue to subsidize this fake stock market, continue to subsidize corporate America and the military industrial complex. You are being robbed blind, and I be, would be willing to bet that maybe 1% of you will have the guts to write to the president and ask him about, you know, about this, uh, you know, how he feels about writing his name in the annals of history as the first president to call for negative rates and trying to sell this to the American people like this is some kind of a utopian moment and we should all be happy about it. I mean, understand what this means for you. It could not be more simple. Um, you, you are about, you're getting set up on such a grand scale. Uh, and you know, look, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you're in a lot of trouble. And I've been explaining this to you for a very long time. If you are a member of the middle class, if you have an interest earning uh, account here, uh, once rates go negative, uh, the banks are going to start siphoning cash right out of your bank account. Not only uh, will you not be earning interest, Right now, you're earning less. Right now, where rates are, if you have an interest earning account, you're being robbed blind because the interest earned on that account is not keeping up with the rate of inflation. Now, 
if the president gets his wish, again, he's gone way beyond the 1% cut to the federal funds rating, is asking for zero and or less, the, the, the banks will literally reach into your account and pull money out. This is Valentine. Valentine, let's see. Same shit, different day, Internet of Things warning from security experts, including hacking and death. Oh, wow. People who install Internet of Things technology in their homes are choosing to live dangerously. Unfortunately, government mandated widespread 5G and I OT technology installation forces all of us to live dangerously. Security experts have been warning <clears throat> the Internet of Things there's a 74% failure rate, which means a whole lot of people can hack in to your Internet of Things home. They can hack into drones, vibrators, kids' toys. You know, look at this. This is scary. Hi, sweetie. It's Mom. Open the front door for me. Can you unlock the front door over the house? Can you open the front door, please? Open the front door. Smart. Shame on you. You do not look pretty today. You are fat. Yeah. Bring those devices into your home. Put them in your children's room. Oh, but how about back to the economy? How useful is the unemployment rate? Five humans who don't count. That unemployment, 3.7%. Yay, Donald! You just whipped this economy. You turned it around. You turned it around so quickly. It was the first six months of you being in office, and suddenly the economy was doing unbelievably well. Oh, God. So, 3.7%. Does it mean that 96% of Americans are going to work this morning? No, not even close. Unemployment rate only counts labor force participants, which is about 63% of the population. Uh, Non-citizens working here and others working off the books won't show up. Neither do active duty members of the military, uh, people classified as disabled, or who are institutionalized or incarcerated aren't labor force participants, nor are retirees or full-time students, people who've been unemployed so long that they're no longer looking actively uh, for work. Uh, they're considered discouraged workers. Ah, the problem is with you. You are thinking negatively, start thinking positively, and doors will open, opportunities will open for you to get work. The problem is you. In short, our bull-loved shit, the BLS, data are fallible measures that diagnose only part of our nation's job market health. How many have been trying to get through to Americans that when they come out and talk about the unemployment rate, they're fudging the numbers. Fudging the numbers. But if you want to believe the lies, because you're doing swell, then you will end up judging other people when they're not doing swell. That's one of the ripple effects of lies. So you can read about all of these people who are really having a very hard time with this uh, economy. Uh, let's see, 
banks seek lower credit score requirements, targeting over 50 million new subprime borrowers. Hey, um, I might have some memory loss, but I do recall that subprime, subprime borrowers, mortgage, you know, it was kind of 2007, 2008, whoa, oh, it exploded our economy. A crash. So let's do it again. Yay! Make America great again. Lenders seemingly unhappy with the vast avalanche, avalanche of debt they've issued over the last decade are now looking to move the goalposts in order to be able to lend even more money to even less credit credit worthy individuals it's unbelievable how unbelievably crazy is our country with a whole lot of crazy americans who continue to buy all of the horse shit that they hear how can we possibly get through to them well i guess they need to do some work on themselves they have to ask that question hmm why do I continue listening to lies and accept them as the truth? It's not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. And you know what? It makes you a dangerous fellow American because you are complicit with all of the destruction the lies are bringing about. Trade war has killed 300,000 jobs and cost Americans <laughs> $1.6 billion. Hey, but Trump said China was going to pay for it, right? And Mexico was going to pay for the wall. And if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Worried about your brain, heart, kidneys, liver, nervous system? Your energy-saving light bulbs. Hmm. It may be poisoning them. Yeah, we have poison up the wazoo, furniture, rugs, mattresses, babies, clothing, everything's poisonous today. You think that was brought about accidentally? Don't think so. Growing number of states adopting red flag gun seizure laws in wake of mass shootings. Yes, now there is Ohio... The Republican Governor Mike Duane, DeWine has been hard at work pushing, pushing gun control proposals following that August 4th mass, mass shooting in Dayton. A Republican. Oh, wow. Huh. Thought it was just the Democrats doing that. Baltimore governor's three-year plan to use police surveillance planes to monitor the public. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound like a free society. That doesn't sound like the United States of America. They're monitoring all of us in Maryland. Do you think it's only in Maryland? No, it's all over. Those drones flying in many states already. Well, you know, <laughs> it's so obvious, it's so obvious that we're gone. Update on California Family kicked off YouTube. A family kicked off YouTube? for fighting Verizon 5G cell tower 45 feet from their home. Why would that happen? I thought we had free speech. I guess not. Well, very interesting and very, very good video that you might want to watch and you might want to circulate. But not very sensitive preoccupation. The United States permits some of the greatest levels of exposure to human populations in the world. If you compare those standards to other countries in Europe and China and Russia, you will note that the standards are much lower. 
they're all looking at the same science space. So why is there such a difference? The spectrum goes all the way from extra low frequency, 60 hertz power fields that give us electricity, all the way up through radio waves, microwaves, and the communication frequencies, and then on over into the you know visible light, and then uh, you know further than that, we're into ionizing radiation or X-rays and gamma rays. And in the old days, we used to think only the ionizing radiation part of the spectrum was carcinogenic or had the potential to cause cancer. Well. We are finding that that was maybe a, maybe too arbitrary a delineation, and now we're seeing that we may have carcinogenic effects down in the lower frequency ranges, and we're talking about power, and we're talking about communication, wireless communication. I moved out of California, up to Washington State after Dynasty because. I wanted some fresh air. I wanted to live where they had clean water, and I just like the whole environmental state of Washington. I really love it up there. I'm very happy. But I've had some interesting experiences since I moved up there. They're going to put up a cell tower right near our house, like less than half a mile. It's going to be loaded with unlimited whips and antennas. Now, 300 feet and an extra 15 for the whips and antennas is 40 feet less than the space needle in Seattle. This is not exactly something we're going to be able to ignore. How is this possible? I mean, here we are today in this age, and we have resources, and we can say all the things that need to be said, but we didn't know what needed to be said. We were ignorant. We went to the hearing passionate, and it didn't mean anything what we said. They said, well, these are all health issues. This doesn't really count. So, um, okay. We've lost. My intention is to let the American public know we have no rights, which is a frightening thing. The FCC has the regulatory power over telecommunication facilities through the Telecommunications Act of 1996. What local governments have control over, what we have the authority to do, is only to regulate the placement, the construction, and the design of telecommunication facilities. We are prohibited from taking into consideration the health and safety impacts of those intents. What? Prohibited? from taking into account the health effects? Who did that? Ah, our fabulous Congress. You know, ignoring what's going on, it led us right here. This is a very loud video. Huh. Check it out. To talk about, though we must, rich people are going to have to allow uh, or be forced to allow lower income people to live near them, which is what we fail to do in this country right now. We, we force lower income working Americans to drive one, two, three hours in either direction to get to. We force. We force lower income Americans to drive three hours to get to work? Is that true? Yeah, some people actually do drive three hours. Uh, not every day. I have known them. They come in from the Hamptons to work in Manhattan. And some of that time they spend in their car is, well, due to a lot of traffic getting into Manhattan. We're going to force rich people to live with poor people. Does that sound like a free country to you? And people actually support this guy? Are you kidding me? Okay, what is he talking about? United Nations Agenda 2030. 
their jobs, very often minimum wage jobs, so they're working two or three of them right now. What if, as we propose to do, we invested in housing that was closer to where you work, very often mixed income housing, meaning the very wealthiest are living next to those who are not the very wealthiest in this country, to make sure that they can both afford to go to the same public schools that we really have that as a place where in this divided country right now you can come together without regard to your income or your race or your ethnicity or any other difference that should not matter. You're not going to come together. You're going to be forced to be together. Do you think that that is going to cure our divisiveness? I don't think so. I think people should have the right to live where they want to live. Uh, I don't know, call me crazy. Matter right now. What, what if we invested, as we propose to do, in high-speed rail and in transit in all of our cities to make sure that if you do not have a car or do not want to use a car, you will not need to have one or you will not be penalized for not having one right now. So, so having cities that are smarter, that are denser, um, that have people living closer to where they work and where their families are to reduce our impact on climate change and greenhouse gas emissions, but also just to improve the quality of life. Um, <laughs> oh my God, how can people listening to this guy uh, think that this is going to improve the quality of life? What he is talking about is Everybody will have this universal basic income, so the rich, the middle class, will all be brought to poor. And that is driven by the United Nations. That's how they're going to cure poverty in the world. Bring everyone down to the level of poverty. Oh, oh my God. You know, you, you, you've got to listen to what is being said by these uh, people. I don't know. People? Are they people? Um, they've got agendas. They're pushing it on to, you know, Americans. And America, uh, there's so many of them who are eating it all up. You know, what really frightened me in watching some of that Democratic debate last night in Houston were the people clapping. Yeah, they're clapping. They're clapping away their own individual rights. They're clapping, applauding away their property rights. Their right under the Second Amendment. Yeah! <laughs> oh, we're in trouble. We are in big trouble. You know, then listening to this schlep of a guy. Ah, man. A communist. Yay, Bernie Sanders! I want to destroy our freedom and bring in communism. Do you think we have crazy Americans? Oh, we sure do. Ever to defeat the most dangerous president in modern American history. We cannot continue to have a president who is corrupt, who is using his office to enrich himself and his family. All right, enough. Also listening to that debate last night, uh, the opening, only just a few of the opening statements of the Democrat candidates up there, Kamala Harris talk, everybody was, their opening statements were about Trump. That's what I heard. It was about Trump and how much hatred this man has fueled in our country. They don't remember the Obama years, the race card continually being played. Um, it was during the Obama years that the hatred got ramped up, you know, work in those black, white, go kill one another, hate one another. Oh, you don't remember any of that? All of these people have been in Congress. This guy, Joe Biden, uh, Warren, uh, others who were not, well, they're now in Congress, but 
they weren't there for they didn't yet get to uh, be there where you could say they were career Congress men or women uh, were in worse shape than we've ever been in. So clearly, these guys, oh my God, I said guys, and I'm referring to even the women in Congress. Uh, what'd they do for you? What'd they do for you? What has the Democratic Party done for you? Now, some people might think, I'm defending Trump. I'm a Trump supporter. And I have to say to you, you've got to do some thinking about your thinking because you've got dichotomous thinking. And you think that you can only have, uh, you can only be on one team, uh, one or the other. Like there's no possible way that you could just be out of the matrix completely. Now, anybody who thinks I'm a Trump supporter, you've not seen a whole hell of a lot of my videos. So I am not a Trump supporter. But, you know, then when I post videos showing, showing clear evidence, Trump, he ain't any better or worse than the last guy. Oh, he's just the continuation of the same policies. Go on and on and on forever show the evidence, and then I'm a libtard. Oh, I love, I love adults in this country. A libtard. Are you three years old? Did you maybe hear that term from, I don't know, uh, some toy that your parents put in your bedroom? You're a libtard. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am this this unbelievable craziness you know, the corruption. He's talking about corruption. Oh, no corruption during the Obama years. No. None. No scandals either. Mhm. Mm and there were scandals up the wazoo. Fast and Furious comes to mind. Oh, but there were so many. And then they they are talking about Obamacare. Oh. And we are looking at a medical profession our health system that has so unbelievable is so corrupt greedy destroying people yay it was obama who transformed our medical system so much is obvious it becomes more obvious every single day but this guy he's talking about corruption and <laughs> Trump enriching himself as if you haven't Bernie and every politician who gets to Washington they don't enhance their wealth that's the machine in Washington DC the executive office Congress that's where they enrich their wealth this guy He's the communist. He wants to bring everybody down to that poverty level. And if you don't think that's true, you better do some research about this guy, this communist. And I cannot believe that there are so many people who are, yay, communist Sanders. He's our comrade. What the hell has gone on in this country? Three houses Bernie Sanders has. Oh, but Carol... They're not palatial estates. Who gives a shit? Three homes? Three homes. A future to believe in. Yeah, you're going to be in a stacking pack. You, rich, are going to be living with the poor. Now, the real rich will not be living with the poor. But, yeah, yeah, the upper middle class and middle class, you're going to be living with the poor because you're going to be brought down. And Trump is helping that. So, do you think he's going to be living in a stack and pack with you? No. The summer home. Nice and comfy, isn't it? 
I wouldn't mind having that. You think you're going to be having this? No. Under Bernie Sanders, he's going to destroy you just like all of the others. It doesn't matter. Communist, socialist, Democrat, Republican. They are destroying all of us. And if you haven't recognized the destruction, then you are someone who loves living in your delusional bubble. Yeah. How about this? Bernie Sanders calls to fight corruption despite wife's corruption case. A corruption case against his wife? Oh, the FBI decided not to prosecute Jane Sanders. What did Jane do? Ah, oh, let's see. Uh, this, what killed Burlington College? The small Vermont liberal arts college closing up shop this month. Jane Sanders. This was back in 2016. And it was just recently that the FBI decided after their investigation uh, that they're not going to prosecute Jane. Ah, uh, Vermont institution led by Jane Sanders from 2004 to 2011. The school announced on Monday that it will shut down later this month, facing insurmountable financial difficulties. The closure comes after years of difficulty for Burlington College, a small school founded in 1972 for non-traditional students. It is with great sense of loss to the educational community that Burlington College's progressive and unique educational model will no longer be available to students. Schools' financial difficulties date to Sanders' tenure as president. Ah, oh, crushing weight of debt from the purchase of a new campus in 2010. So, in 2010, Sanders and the board went further in terms of brokering a deal to buy a new plot of lakefront land with multiple buildings. And isn't it interesting that this summer retreat is lakefront property that's on that same lake in Vermont, Champlain, where the 10 million was taken out to purchase this lakefront property for the college. I don't know about that investigation. The college used 10 million in bonds and loans to pay for the campus. Land, 33 acres. Ah, 33. And they bought it, yeah, from the Roman Catholic Diocese. Well, Jane Sanders' plan was to bet big to finance the deal, Burlington issued tax-free bonds, took a $3.5 million loan from the diocese, received $500,000 bridge loan from Tony Permello, per, mer, at low, whatever, a wealthy local real estate developer, uh, close friends with the Sanderses. I guess the Sanderses, well, their circle is the bourgeois. Ah, really? Sanders left her post in 2011 for reasons undisclosed. Her successor, Plunkett, tried to bring more financial stability but failed. And in 2014, uh, their accreditation was put on probation. Plunkett resigned. November 2014, interim president Mike Smith sold 25 of the original 33 acres to a local developer for 7.5 million, yada, yada, yada. At a press conference held by the school's president and dean elicited surprising replies. Asked whether Jane Sanders was to blame for the closure, President Carol Moore, Dean Carol E. Holm declined to answer, no comment even as they acknowledged that the college's press release in naming the land purchase as the reason for the closure implicitly pointed a finger in her direction, Smith and Holm, 
also declined to comment on whether there was a federal investigation into the college or whether the FBI or other authorities had interviewed faculty, staff, or administrators, or if they'd sent any subpoenas. Those no comments may raise eyebrows, since it's generally assumed that if the answer was no, administrators would simply have said so, and they didn't. So, what does that lead you to believe? They're all corrupt. Can we not see, can we not see this? Here, how about institute founded by Sanders' wife, son, is shutting down. Ah. Vermont-based institute has stopped accepting donations and plans to suspend all operations by the end of May, so there could not even be an appearance of impropriety. Ah, Jane, you're just so, so moral. Do you want to throw up? 2016, Sanders criticized Hillary Clinton over her family's nonprofit, saying the foundation run by Clinton's husband and daughter amounted to a backdoor for foreign leaders and others seeking to buy access and influence. The Sanders Institute could open the Vermont senator to charges of hypocrisy founded to promote liberal policies, yada, yada, yada. Jane Sanders uh, didn't take a salary, but her son, David Driscoll, was paid $100,000 a year as a co-founder uh, and executive director. Driscoll, previously an executive for Nike and the Vermont snowboarding firm Burton, had no previous nonprofit experience. Hey, but they won't disclose their donors. Sounds like the Clintons, doesn't it? Yeah. Lack of transparency in the family ties have drawn criticism from good government advocates for a politician who runs on fairness and socialist principles. This looks like the old political games. I'd say so. I would say so. The Institute's only available federal tax return showed it raised half a million dollars in 2017. Uh, Jane Sanders told the AP that the group raised uh, nearly uh, one million last year, much of it in small donations from about 10,000 donors. We haven't disclosed names and contribution amounts because we've relied mainly on small donor contributions. Well, there's just too many people. We can't release that information. Sounds like Trump. Sounds like the Clintons. Sounds like everyone in friggin' Washington, D.C. Sounds like the Obamas. The bulk of our donations come from donors that contribute less than $100. All right, all of those donations pouring in for Obama, and I'm sure there were because Obama, oh, he just took the world when he was campaigning for a ride. Um, <laughs> and he talks about enrichment, Bernie Sanders, how Barack Obama has made 20 million since arriving in Washington. Uh, let's see. Barack Obama achieved a net worth of 40 million. Wow. Well, you sure did increase your millions in a short period of time. And Obama will likely become the first ex-president billionaire. Whoa. These people, boy, they sure do make a lot of money just going in there. And they're so self-serving, you know. Oh, wait, no, no, no. They're servants, right? Y yeah, servants. Servants of the people. Barack and Michelle Obama are buying a 15 million estate in Martha's, Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> you know, hello, Americans. Are you not recognizing that we've got a problem here in our country? with these politicians. Okay, I, I go on and on. I just go on and on. Hey guys, you can't shut me up.